ran over just a bit, as usual, lately. Maybe it's the Cosmic Fire effect, I don't know. This is the beginning of Cosmic Fire webinar commentaries 11B, page 1223. We've been dealing with um, modes of group interplay according to the seven rays, the ray groups and the kinds of effect that they cause when interplaying with each other. And these effects have been along three lines. We've noticed uh, commonalities of uh, certain words that are continually used. We've noticed so far for five rays that the very first sentence dealing with the first sub-aspect of expression gives us epitomes of the rays. Uh, ray 1, destruction. Ray 2, construction. Ray 3, vitalization. Ray 4, perfection. Ray 5, correspondence so far. We've noticed that the word stimulation is used repeatedly in, related to the, in relation to the second sub-aspect of ray interplay, whatever the ray may be thus far. And we've recognized the word impulse used for the third subcategory of interplay. Impulse and energy seem to relate to the third. Now, we are beginning with the ray of abstract idealism. And usually it's called, you know, the ray of devotion or idealism. But this is an important way of considering it because it connects with the uh, abstract mind uh, or abstract intelligence of the third ray. And the three and six we have seen are definitely related. Even the third and six laws of the soul are definitely related and they have those corresponding rays. The third law of service has the sixth ray and the sixth law of... of um, the called expansive response has the third ray. Now, the word is going to be reflection. Reflection of reality through group work. So there's some sort of um, imitation or uh, the um, ideal uh, emerges uh, instead of the idea. So the, the group work brings about group work brings about a vision rather than a revelation. And that is interesting because you know when you really want reality you go to the second ray that is going to be uh, the revelation of what is through the intuition and the reflection of that in the desire body. The astral body, uh, astral plane, so often reflects that which is on the higher planes and is more real. That which, okay, let's get that straightened out. <clears throat> Again, stimulation. The stimulation of man. Now, uh, it's very much like Ray 2. We had the stimulation of desire and of love. Stimulation of desire, the love principle. Now we have <clears throat> maybe stimulation. Why does he use the word man? <clears throat> Is he referring to the entire um, personality unit? <clears throat> Does this word man refer to the entire personality unit? See, this is very similar to the second statement of uh, Ray 1. Uh, no, Ray 2. Stimu stimulation of desire and the uh, love did it say element? Ah, the love principle. That's what it was. Okay. There's a lot left to discuss. And then desire, energy, instinct, and aspiration. We had here, um, under number five, we had the monastic energy. Now, this may be also 
We might also consider this related to the concrete mind. This might also be considered as related to the concrete mind. Monastic energy or impulse. Now we have desire energy or impulse, um, instinct and aspiration. So these are not necessarily high. The first two are not necessarily high. Instinct is generally not high. It tends to be the kinds of desires that preserve the form. Desire energy is neutral. Aspiration is uplifting. But here we seem to have uh, not just the stimulation of desire, but the stimulation of the man through desire. So the, the personality elemental is stimulated by means of desire. Okay. So reflection is the word. Now, so far we've been listing the words, haven't we? So let's continue the key words. Destruction. Construction. Vitalization. I think that's right. Let's just, I better check that. Yeah, vitalizing, vitalizing, vitalization or vitalizing. Hmm. Okay. Or uh, vitalizing, perfection. Correspondence, and this is simply reflection. <clears throat> Trying to get these words associated with the rays firmly in our mind. We've had stimulation of the self, we've had stimulation of the soul, we've had stimulation of the form. We've had the stimulation of the solar angels. We've had, in the last one, stimulation of the logoic, dense physical body. And now we have stimulation of the man, as he is embodied, I suppose, um, in the three lower worlds. Although the man is the the word is capitalized, so we have to be careful. Why is man capitalized? Why is man capitalized? And remember, too, that the monad is the man. Uh, and it resides on the sixth sub, uh, subplane of the cosmic uh, physical plane. So we could be talking about the stimulation according to the number six of something very high. This could be the stimulation using the uh, sixth ray of something very high the spirit of man. Okay, I mean sometimes what seems to be applied to that which is low can be equally applied to that which is high, so we have to um, at least be open to that possibility. And whereas we had monastic energy before, we now have desire energy, lower instinct and aspiration it's all that is moving the lower man forward. All, all that is moving the lunar lords forward. Because um, ray six connects with the lunar lords. Okay. And then, finally, he, he really has... Um, stuck to the use of the word stimulation, has he not? He, he has used that all the time. Now we have union. 
of energy and substance, substance of the three lower worlds through group activity. Um, these groups unite the highest and the lowest energy with substance. And the four higher worlds with the three lower. Okay. So now, as we have been doing, let us uh, collect. Let us collect the descriptive words. By now, we're get, going to get to know them. Construction, vitalizing, perfection, correspondence, um, reflection, the mirror, the silver, the moon, the six, and union. These are the seven, seven characteristic um, characteristic words. Words. Care. I forgot the R. Characteristic words. Stimulation appears again. So, you know, uh, energy and substance must evoke each other. See, this is from the seventh ray method of healing and passing through the one who seeks to aid. Um, okay, I forgot that last little part. But pass, uh, uh, it passes through the one, yes, well, as long as I've mentioned it, let's go for it. And passing through the one who seeks to aid and help, help and aid. Okay, raise and initiation, that's the wrong one. Should be esoteric healing. Uh, passing through the one who... Uh, okay must evoke each other. Aha. Uh -huh. Something's wrong. Oh, that's wrong with the spelling. There we go. Substance and spirit. So, so, substance, that's it. Substance is substance and spirit is the energy. Substance and spirit must evoke each other in passing through the one who seeks to the center of the one who seeks to aid, produce the new and good. That's it. Okay. I had the word energy and spirit a little bit confused. But energy is, in a way, spirit. And substance is that which substands. So the group activity is, it is constructive, as in the case. This is constructive group activity as in the case of the second ray methods. Okay, stimulation of all etheric forms. Here we had, under six, we had stimulation of the man through desire. Here, under five, we had um, stimulation of the logoic dense physical body. That's really quite a departure, but I suppose stimulation of the lower mind would also be there, the concrete mind, as it contributes to precipitation. Stimulation of the solar angels, stimulation of the form, stimulation of the soul, stimulation of the self. We have to get those equated if we possibly can. So finally, under the seventh ray, stimulation of all etheric forms. And when these groups get together, when they interplay with each other, there will be great etheric stimulation, and the result will be vital energy, or what we might call vital activity. I think um, we can gain by looking at... I think I'll make a tabulation for us here, and see... Um, 
what ideas can come to us as we read down the columns and across the rows. Right. Well, now what we have here is I've, I've created this um, chart, which should help us see similarities and differences of words. Now, we've gone across this in terms of uh, the rows, but in terms of the columns, um, we can see this all under our eye a bit better. We have, for the, uh, the first ray sub-influence here, we've begun with uh, destruction of forms through group interplay. That's the ray one method. Um, and I'm going to highlight these, or at least bold them, construction of forms through group interplay, the exact opposite, vitalizing of forms through group interplay, perfecting of forms through group interplay, uh, correspondence or producing correspondences, correspondence of form to type through group in Influence. Notice sometimes the word work is very important for the third ray. Um, I am the worker and the work, the one that is. So this is uh, connected with um, the third ray verb. Here it is group influence and not interplay. Reflection of reality through group work. The work is therefore connecting the sixth ray and the third ray, and this time union of energy and substance through uh, group activity. Okay, well, whether there's a real um, significance to the choice of these particular words, the entire chart is really ruling uh, interplay and what arises because of it. Now, here are all these different modes of stimulation, reading down the columns. Stimulation of the self, or egoic principle, that's the, the, the self at the very heart of the being. Uh, stimulation of desire, the love principle. This happens when the second ray groups interplay. Stimulation of forms, the etheric or pranic principle. Notice that it's quite close to stimulation of all etheric forms, but perhaps these might be more dense forms. Uh, the etheric or pranic principle underlying those forms. Stimulation of the solar angels, the mediating principle, or the uh, monastic principle. And in this case, we have, um, we probably have that type of manas, which is a uh, higher mind. Um, a stimulation of the logoic, dense physical body. That one is unusual and has to do with the concretizing power of the fifth ray, the three worlds. So it's, uh, it is uh, keeping the dense physical body of the solar logos in concretion, uh, producing those definite concrete forms by which that dense physical body is characterized. Stimulation of the man through desire, whether that is man the monad or man the personality. Stimulation of all etheric forms. And here, uh, not dense forms, particularly. Here the focus is on forms and the etheric underlying part that stimulates the forms or vitalizes the forms. Uh, I think I'll, what I'll do here is just... Uh, yeah, I'll do this. That um, there is a vitalizing, a vitalizing of the dense forms by the uh, pranic principle. But here, in number seven, is the stimulation of etheric forms, per se, and, whoop, I don't want that. I want something much simpler than that. Yes, that's what I want. I hope I get it. And this is simply the stimulation of the underlying etheric forms and no concentration mm, upon the 
dense physical form. Now, we'll go to the third subset. Somehow, we really have this idea of stimulation, stimulation and I want to say um, animation, as that is definitely connected with the soul aspect. Anima is soul. Now, the third sub-influence, spiritual impulse or energy, soul impulse or energy, material impulse or energy. These set the, uh, the influences of the rays of aspect. Now, we have a different type of work. Buddhic, monastic, desire, and vital. So here we are moving down from the Buddhic plane, step by step. Moving down, so to speak down, from the Buddhic plane, step by step. So Buddhic energy comes in under the fourth ray. Monastic energy of two kinds comes in under the fifth ray, I suppose, of two kinds. Uh, desire energy comes in uh, well, again, of two kinds. One, aspirational. And then when we reach the seventh level, it's simply vital energy. So these are the modes of group interplay. And the practical part of it is when we uh, find groups on a similar ray interacting, these are the kinds of results that we can expect. Uh, it's not so unusual uh, in, in life. Let's just say that uh, there are a number of groups gathered around a seventh ray project. They're all characterized by the seventh ray, and they have a similar objective in mind. Well, the result will be union of energy and substance through group activity even though they each have a different function, let us say, within the larger project. They're all characterized by the seventh ray, and you will get the higher um, energy or idea and substance united. All etheric forms will be stimulated, so the, um, that which sustains the form will be strengthened, and the whole will be characterized by a vital energy um, expressing upon the physical plane. And, you know, we, we tend to gather in our groups. And when we come together for conferences, we are often representatives of many uh, groups that are on a similar ray. Sometimes when I've watched the astrologers get together at the big conventions, many groups are coming in. They are all characterized, or most of them characterized by the third ray. What can be expected? And here we have this. And also the business energy. You know, when people are meeting on some sort of business project um, in order to get a certain uh, creative project going, this is what happens. So I think we can take these 21 uh, forms of uh, 21 modes, 21 methods, modes, methods of group interplay and find some practical correspondences here in our daily life. I thought that it would be worthwhile to make that tabulation because sometimes it's just hard to see things unless you can read across and read down. And maybe we'll do that also when we come to this uh, tabulation concerning the, um, uh, con concerning the creative hierarchies because we don't quite seem to be done with that subject. All right, 22 modes of group interplay. And I think what I'm going to do is bring this over here and substitute it. OK. Well, friends, all right. Now we move on. Today the moon is in Scorpio. The, the energy here is a little heavy, the sky is gray, the rain is coming down. Okay, <laughs> maybe you can hear it in my voice sometimes. 
these 21 methods and their synthesis, which is the, uh, uh -huh. no, that's not it, so I'll go back two times. Um, right, there we go. All right, I need to copy this. So these 21 methods and their synthesis, uh, which is the holistic 22nd, sum up very largely all that can be said anent actions and motions of all deva substance and all forms. Aha. Uh -huh. All right, so this is having to do somehow uh, much to do with the, ac with the uh, activity aspect in general. Because it is called by what name? Well, maybe the, the thing to do is go back here. Ray methods of activity. Okay. So, wherever activity is the subject, uh, when activity is the subject, the Deva kingdom is always involved. The Devas are coming in under the third and second ray and man under the second and first ray, generally speaking. Under the law of attraction, the interplay between these ray forces and all atomic forms is brought about. There's the second aspect, combining with the third. And manifestation becomes a fact in nature, and the great Maya is. Well, let's just put it like this way, uh, this, um, that manifest, uh, manifestation through form is the great Maya. Right. Let's read this again. These 21 methods and their synthesis of the 22nd sum up very largely all that can be said anent the actions and motions. That's the third aspect. Is it not so? The third aspect of all deva substance and all forms into which the devas build themselves. Under the law of attraction, second aspect, hmm? S.A. Uh, the interplay between these ray forces and all atomic forms is brought about. Ray forces and atomic forms. It's almost like uh, two levels, really. The second level, uh, sorry, represented by ray forces, and the third level represented by atomic forms. The interplay becomes a fact in nature, and the great Maya is. The two and the three combine to make the great, great Maya. The number one breaks up that Maya eventually. It might be noted in conclusion that the following factors, three atomic relations, uh, yes, seven laws, and 22 methods of activity make the 32, and I'll bet we could combine the entirety of the 32 to make the 33 of the um, 32 to make the 1 to be added to make 33. So let's review the uh, atomic relations, cosmic fire. Um, here they are, individual, systemic, and universal. So let's put them down. Individual systemic and universal. We remember individual has to do with the microcosm. Systemic has to do with relations between microcosms and universal has to do with the relation of the microcosm to the enveloping whole. Seven laws of group work or of the soul and 22 methods of activity uh, or interplay between um, ray groups. 
This will all combine to make the 32. One thinks, of course, of the degrees in masonry. These numbers are not arbitrary. They, they do have their uh, significance. See, so the basic relations are the individual, systemic, and the universal. And then that's the 3 hovering above the 7. And that's the 10. And so we have the Kabbalistic uh, formation there. And then the 22 methods of interplay or activity. It's almost as if the atomic relations connect with the first aspect of divinity, the laws of the soul with the second, although law means the first aspect, and the methods of activity with the third aspect of divinity. So these are essential relations, and they are the first aspect. And then laws of the soul, uh, methods of group interplay, methods and laws by which one must fulfill the soul, and the methods of activity in the ray groups themselves. 32 is the number. Making the 32 vibrations necessary to produce, as far as man is concerned, the five planes of evolution. Well, what do we have? Five, aha. Uh -huh. We are missing, aha, uh -huh. missing only three is the, so to speak, atmic causal, uh, causal body, is the atmic causal body to be counted as on three atmic, uh, no, atmic, no, at one minute, atmic subplanes. Is that possible? There, uh, there are, uh, we are reminded, uh, as we know, 35 subplanes, or in reality, the 32 minor vibrations and the three which dominate. Um, just as the three planes of the ego on the mental plane dominate the remaining planes in the three worlds. So in the five worlds of the hierarchy, the three higher subplanes of the atomic plane hold an analogous place. This is a big hint. Um, and this is coming out in some charts. Uh, big hint. Mm. Re a center of focus on the atmic plane, which um, covers the, the three higher subplanes of the atmic plane. So if the soul on the higher levels of the mental plane can dominate 18, so that's 21. So the uh, soul um, equals 3, and the 18 lower subplanes uh, equals 21, and the atmic body equals 3, and the 32 um, minor vibrations equals 35. You kind of wonder whether we can apportion any of these vibrations over the 32 subplanes. But there, there is something up there, some kind of um, causal body, atmic body, which has to be destroyed in order to liberate the monad. So something, some structure on the higher three levels of the atmic plane must be destroyed to liberate the monad onto its own plane. And maybe this is something uh, which the sixth degree initiate must perform. The master will use, you know, just the way the third degree initiate, uh, th these analogies are coming to me at this point, um, just as the third degree initiate will utilize the causal body to direct uh, his life in the lower three worlds, so the master 
will utilize the mm, the atmic body. No, that's atma buddhi. Atmic body, whatever we want to call it, to um, to direct his life in the five worlds of superhuman and superhuman and human evolution. I think there is a convincing analogy there. So, um, these make the 32 vibrations necessary to produce, as far as man is concerned, the five planes of evolution. Definitely, the 32 minor vibrations are connected with the five planes of evolution. The 32 minor vibrations are connected with the five planes of evolution. Definitely. There are, as we know, 35 subplanes. 35 vortices of force make a master. Or in reality, the 32 minor vibrations and the three which dominate. Well, we just have to make a comparison between what we find. Uh huh. What do we find on the higher mental plane? That may tell us what we find on the highest three levels of the atmic plane. Well, this uh, is this an atmic body? What is it? At atmic concentration of force, some sort of vehicle. Uh, we might make the analogy and say that just as the causal body moves from the third sublevel to the second at a certain point, would the atmic body, as the higher initiate is preparing to transition into the monad, um, or at the beginning of that preparation, move on to the second sublevel? And can we make a some kind of correspondence between what we find on the first sublevel, which is the jewel in the lotus, on the first sublevel of the mental plane, what will we find? Is there some central fire in this atmic concentration, this atmic vehicle? And do we find it just between the highest level of the atmic plane and the monadic plane? Well, this is where analogies take you into suppositions. But we have no confirmation uh, of these suppositions and maybe even no hints towards them at all. We just have what analogy gives us. All right, friends. Um, I wish I could say that this was the end of number 11, but it's not. We still have a little ways to go, and I will um, think of some summary here, I think. It will be important rather than begin the new subject. Let's see if that's possible. I think um, <clears throat> one of the things we can do here is to at least look at this chart of the seven creative hierarchies. These are really the seven um, manifested creative hierarchies. <clears throat> and at least read them and set ourselves up for some examination in the next program. I've made these larger here. Um, we'll have to really get into the symbolism very strongly. But at least take a look at the <clears throat> Manifested Seven, reading up and reading down. So, reading across the divine lives they are called, even though sometimes the burning suns of desire, unless that is a mistake. Their numbers are one on the cosmic physical plane and six also. And if they were numbered up, they would be seven, which is not really a uh, given or, uh, <clears throat> or seven up. The symbol, a closed 12-petaled lotus, golden. And we will move into that 
discussion of the symbolism, they are the first aspect of force, um, the first aspect of the sixth type of force or shakti. Let's go, let's go back to hierarchy, hierarchy number uh, one. Um, let's see, how far back would we have to go? A ways, but not too far. <clears throat> okay, here's hierarchy two, and hierarchy uh, um, the has for its type of energy the first aspect of the sixth type of cosmic electricity. Now this is not exactly put correctly, apparently. Sixth type of cosmic electricity. So I think what we need to do is insert this. Cosmic force of Shakti and also cosmic electricity. Uh, the first aspect, the first, the first aspect of the sixth type of cosmic electricity. We will try to be as accurate as we can be here and, and import from the paragraphs what it does say, even if the diagram doesn't say it. The burning suns of desire, their numbers are two or seven numbering down or six. A seven colored spheres, each with a central fire. That will be interesting to interpret. Their, um, their type of electricity is... Uh, the second aspect of the seventh type of force. Seventh Shakti, it says here. Seventh type of force from out the many. Okay. The triads are the third creative hierarchy. These are all on the cosmic physical plane. They're the triads or triple flowers. We have the name. They're the third or the eighth or five up. That has to be included. Five up. A triple flame, yes, but hovering above a golden altar. And we will try to understand what that is. Is that the altar of sacrifice for the solar angels? What is their type of energy? Um, let's see. A triple energy, etc., etc. The third aspect of electric force of the first type. Third aspect of electric force of the first type of cosmic energy. Third aspect of the, and, and now we'll write exactly what it says. First shock to your type of force. Third aspect of the, of electric force of the first type of cosmic energy. <clears throat> of electric force of the first type of cosmic energy because if we don't have everything that he says, the words here included are not sufficient. The lords of sacrifice or the initiates. It seems that under the law of sacrifice we could include Scorpio, I think. It's four or nine, and also, or four up. Oh, four or nine? No, that's not it. We have to go back. Hmm. Okay. Or four up. And I think, you know, there are different numbers for each of them. I mean, if we count all three numbers, for instance, two and four is nine and six is fifteen, right? Two or seven, nine and six is fifteen. Three and eight is eleven, and five is sixteen. Four and nine is thirteen, and four is seventeen. Uh, and this is, uh, or three up. 
or three up. But we'll first work here and see if he gives anything further. Uh, the sun standing with outstretched arms in space. And if it's true that it's S-O-N and not S-U-N, we have a very important uh, indication. Now, do we have anything here that... Uh, Yeah, I'm not sure that we have anything here that is written other than what is in the text. The second aspect of the fourth cosmic energy. Let's see if we have here anything that says cosmic energy when we're studying the fourth creative hierarchy. Mm-hmm. It doesn't appear that there is something to describe the type of energy except what is in the tabulation or the chart. So I don't see that. Fourth type of cosmic, fourth cosmic energy. Let's take a look if there's anything here that we can... Fourth cosmic energy nothing. And if we put down here, fourth cosmic energy, nothing again, because it's in one of the footnotes. So, we'll just have to go with what we have here, the second aspect of the fourth cosmic energy. And it is energy, but, but this is um, Shakti or force. There are different ways of dividing these. As I recall, I divided them by cosmic, uh, cosmic energy, by cosmic prana, and by etheric cosmic prana, and by the energies of the sun, which were considered to be electric fire, solar fire, and fire by friction. Those were the three kinds of energies which uh, D.K. referred, uh, which he linked with what he was doing here in terms of describing each one of these. The crocodiles are perfect ones, and there I really think the ore needs to be considered carefully because one of the uh, aspects of the hierarchy is the crocodiles, and the other, I think, the perfect ones. I don't think the crocodiles are by any means the perfect ones per se. The five-pointed star with the symbol of System 1 in the center. We don't know that symbol unless he gives it elsewhere. This is the fourth aspect of the fifth cosmic force. Notice how cosmic forces are used here for the five, six, and seven and not the term energy. Uh, and this is the fifth cosmic force, which is Mahat. But it's the fourth aspect. And we saw earlier how the uh, solar angels were connected also with the number four and with the law of magnetic control. So here we have, when it comes to number four, the stimulation of the, um, of the solar angels. Here they are. It seems that Mercury and Venus both are related to these angels, especially Venus at this time, but not without Mercury. Then we have um, the sacrificial fires or the aspirants. That's a different name given. Six or eleven. Now here, this is five or ten, fifteen, that's eighteen. Six or eleven makes seventeen. And uh, or two up. So 18 is the number, and that's very interesting because it correlates with the moon. Um, no, no, no. Two up, two up. 18 was here, and 19, we have the two reversed in a sense. 
One is the sun number, that's 19, and the other is the moon number, that's 18. So it's quite a reversal. A silver moon surmounted by an equal armed cross, the Aquarian cross and also the, the symbol of the lower element lives. It's the third aspect of the sixth cosmic force, which I suppose, in a way, we can call cosmic uh, kema. And finally, the baskets of nourishment, remember they are not the inert lives themselves. They are actually um, related to a principle of the solar logos. This is the seven, seven down, or twelve down, that's nineteen, uh, or one up, and that's twenty. So these summary numbers have to be considered. 7, 19, 20, 6, 17, 19, 5, 15. Well, there's different ways of doing it, aren't there? I could have just gone uh, 5, 10, or 18, or 5, 15, and 18, if I continue to add. The fourth aspect of the seventh creative force and not cosmic. So there are differentiations of forces here that it is hard to um, map. We have creative force, cosmic force, cosmic energy. We have um, this is Shakti. And it doesn't say that it's cosmic force, the first Shakti or type of force, the sixth cosmic force, or Shakti. But here, cosmic force and Shakti are alike. But notice here, here's the sixth cosmic force under the sacrificial fires or the aspirant. And here also is the sixth cosmic force, or Shakti. Maybe a force is a Shakti. And do we have there the seventh cosmic force, or Shakti? If we do, we have some duplication. But this, um, DK's words seem to refer us to something else that makes this listing a little less standardized than it otherwise might appear. Uh, the, the, the sixth cosmic force, or Shakti, and let's see what it says about electricity once again. Um, okay. I've gone too far. For sure. Here it is. <clears throat> the, sixth, the first aspect of the sixth type of cosmic electricity. And here I want to put that in, uh, of the sixth type of cosmic electricity. So it's not exactly, exactly replicated in number six, which is the sixth cosmic force, although there is a connection. And the seventh shakti, the seventh type of force from out the many, is not exactly replicated in the seventh creative force, though there is, again, a connection. You can actually, you know, you can see all the numbers. Um, <laughs> let's see. Let's look at the numbers. We'll do that, and we'll find a new way of adding them up. Um... See, we have the numbers down and numbers up. But numbers, numbers down begin from here, and numbers up from what point? From the very bottom, 12. So let's look at the... Um, we're going to insert some other hierarchies. Okay, we will insert other creative hierarchies. First, 
creative hierarchy. Numbers 1, 12, and 5. Do you see how I got that? Uh, I am numbering up from the lowest level of the cosmic astral plane, even though this hierarchy has not quite escaped. And um, so what do we have there? That's 18, if we look at that. The second creative hierarchy, numbers 2, 11, and 4. Are those correct? 2, 11. Yeah, 2 and 11 are 13, and 4 is 17. So that's 17, and above, immediately above is 18. And third creative hierarchy, numbers 3, 10, and 3. That's the middlemost group. I mean, if it's, if it's legitimate for us to take the manifested creative hierarchies and count from above on a map that doesn't even exist for this one, from above and from below, um, and also from above. The, in other words, the numbers are 6, 1, and 7. The numbers are 7, 2, and 6. In other words, counting subplanes. Then we can certainly do that when we have the uh, lesser, uh, the, the the smaller group of unmanifested creative hierarchies. So that's one way to do it. Um, another way to do it, the number three, counting the uh, cosmic astral subplanes. And I'm going to make an abbreviation there. It's cosmic astral subplanes. All right. Cosmic astral subplanes. And, you know, there would be cosmic mental subplanes and so forth. But right now we're dealing with this. So when it comes to the unknown, we have um, another unknown. We have two, 11 and 4, and 3 counting in relation to the cosmic astral subplanes. And this will be uh, 4 counting in relation to the cosmic astral subplanes. And the third creative hierarchy has the numbers 3 and then 10, but also 3 from the bottom. But 5, this is 5 counting in relation to the cosmic astral subplanes. And we will go, uh-huh. I see. Test. Test. Yes, that works. And the... Uh-huh. Now we're back where we belong. Sometimes things fade out for a moment on this satellite. The fourth creative hierarchy... Numbers 4, 9, and notice how interesting. We're going, to, we're going to draw some similarities here. 4, 9, and 2. And also uh, 6, counting in relation to the cosmic astral subplanes. Now, the next one is more ideal. This is the fifth creative hierarchy. It's not how it is yet, but it's how it will be. Numbers 5, 8, and 1, with um, 7 
counting in relation to the cosmic astral subplanes. What we're going to do before long is we're going to, um, what we will do is look for the numerical relationships. For instance, um, immediately, you know, for instance, what are all the hierarchies which share, what are all the hierarchies which share the same number? Like, for instance, Pisces, the Pisces creative hierarchy, uh, shares a number, one, with the Leo creative hierarchy and with the Aquarius. Pisces, Leo, Aquarius make a triangle. So what we can do is by numerical resonance, we can create certain triangles. Uh, when it comes to this particular grouping, I'm not sure how we should do it exactly. Um, we can count from below, we can count from the base of the astral plane, which is from the cosmic astral plane, it's a one. And that is legitimate. But we can also count from the top of the astral plane. And then we have the the planes on which these hierarchies appear. Note here that we are dealing also with the planes on which these hierarchies appear. First, second, third, fourth, and so forth. And we are only, we are counting here from the first of the unmanifested creative hierarchies, and then we get a six. Otherwise, it would be an eight. So I think the thing to do, perhaps, we'll have to see which way it works out better, but I think that it may work out better if we count from the bottom of the astral plane rather than from the very top of the cosmic astral. That will always be standard. In other words, the well, the, the Pisces hierarchy has an important ray 3, which is connected with counting from the top of the cosmic astral plane. Its numbers are 1 and 12, this is 13, and 3 would be 15. What does that number tell us? It's a Kumaric number. Otherwise, we would have 1 and 12, which is 13, and 5, which would be 18. What would that tell us? So we don't know yet whether we should um, count the the ray number as important because it's really the plane number. It seems that, however, we have already begun numbering not from the plane but from the first uh, of the hierarchies. This is the first of the unmanifested hierarchies and it is legitimate. When, uh, and this, these are the numbers up from below. However, when we look at the manifested hierarchies, we are definitely counting the plane numbers, absolutely. And that is according to the ray which is released. We are also counting from the bottom of the uh, hierarchy table. So we really only have um, three places to count on this particular. In other words, numbers down from the first creative, unmanifested creative hierarchy, the number on the cosmic physical plane, which represents the plane on which this hierarchy stands, which is the same as the ray, and the numbers up from the bottom. We have three possibles. I don't think it would work to start counting from the cosmic astral plane because then we'd have to count from the cosmic mental plane and the cosmic buddhic plane. Constantly we keep on getting other numbers, all of which 
would be separated from each other by a 7. So when it comes to this one, we have to decide whether we simply, whether this ray number is very important, or whether counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is somehow equally as important or more important. Well, at first, yes, at first I thought I would have difficulty filling the time, and I did, until I began to work on the creative hierarchies once again. So, where we are with these is we will speak here of the uh, end uh, end of um, Cosmic Fire webinar commentaries number 11b and we are on page 1224 okay Right. There we are. Mm, page twelve twenty four. And beginning of Cosmic Fire webinar commentaries at twelve A. Page twelve twenty four. So, this is a complicated subject. You kind of wonder why he didn't take it up when he was talking specifically about the creative hierarchies. Why did he put this uh, significant chart in this place? So, but now he will continue to elaborate, um, and we will have to, if we can, connect it what, with what we've already done on the creative hierarchy. So, I'm over time, and... We'll go on uh, shortly, and we'll talk to you a little bit later, working now on the creative hierarchies in a special tabulation which gives their symbols, and also first I'm going to work on similarities of numbers and the triangles which might be created between hierarchies based upon similarity of numbers. So we'll see you soon. Take care.